Okay, in this video, we are gonna do a what's in the bag, specifically what's in my bag. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, I'm AJ. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So we're gonna be doing a what's in my bag video for 2022, or at least the beginning of 2022. I haven't done one of these before, so I figured it's kind of rainy outside. This seems like a good time to do it. Okay, first up, the driver. Driver that is in my bag right now is the Cobra LTDX LS. This is the latest Cobra offering as far as drivers go. This is the low spin model also. I have liked this driver so far. If you've been on the channel for a while, you may know that Drivers and me do not always get along very well, but thus far this one has been performing pretty well. Uh, this is the nine degree. I've got it cranked up one degree actually to 10. This driver I found actually the, the sitting uh, stated loft on it at nine degree is actually a little generous. It's probably closer to eight. So me lofting it up to 10 gets it closer to nine. It also sits pretty open, so cranking it up a degree also helps square it just a little bit more. So it sits basically perfectly square when I just set it down on the ground. Uh, the shaft I have in this driver, I've gone back to the Diamana, basically blue board shaft. This is a little bit older shaft, but classic blue board, mid bend profile. Always seems to suit my game pretty well. This is the 62, so low 60 gram weight. And then I've got these pure pro grips on well i've got them basically on all my clubs and if you are looking for a new grip this year or getting ready to replace your grips i would definitely suggest you checking out these pure grips i think these are by far my favorite grips right now i think they are just the perfect balance of feel and tackiness they just sort of check all the boxes. It's very easy to install with compressed air. In fact, that's the recommended way to do it. So getting them on and taking them back off is super easy. They're made in America and they come in a whole slew of different colors. So I think there's probably like 15 different colors, something like that now. So all sorts of different colors if you wanna match things up or just go with something a little bit more unique. And again, I think the feel of them, the texture of them, the grip that they give you is really excellent. Okay, next up, and if you've been on the channel again for a while, you may recognize this club because I did a video specifically about it. I will leave a link to that video down in the description, but that is my three wood, or in this case, really, I call it my two wood because what we've got here is the Callaway Maverick Max three wood at 13 and a half degrees. They're strong three wood. Now, what we did here is we actually paired this up with a longer, lighter shaft. So I've got in here the Hazardous RDX Blue Shaft, again in the sort of 60 gram weight class. So usually if I was putting a three wood in play, I would like to have it sort of go, you know, maybe up 10 grams from my driver. So my driver being 60, I'd have a 70 in my three wood. But with this club, because I was trying to make it into more of a two wood, more of a, a T replacement club, I went ahead and went again with a lighter weight 60 odd gram shaft. We also made this shaft 44 inches long. So again, that's all going back to this idea of a two wood. So we've got a lower loft, we've got a longer shaft and all together, it makes it a little more like a two wood, a little more distance off the tee. Next up, I've got a 19 degree, excuse me, actually it's an 18 degree. It's an 18 degree Callaway Big Bertha hybrid. This model is a couple years old now and basically just your sort of standard Callaway hybrid. So pretty oversized club head, forgiving, easy to hit. This club has to sort of do a lot of different jobs because I've got a pretty good size gap in my bag right between my strong three wood slash two wood that maybe we say you know if I'm hitting it well goes 250 off the tee and my next club after this going down is a four iron, which if I step on it is like a, you know, like a 210, maybe 215 yard club. So there's a pretty big gap there that I'm really relying on just this one club to fill, but it seems to do a pretty good job. If I really 
step on this, I can get about 230 out of it. Um, and if I choke down an inch on it, then I can get, you know, take a nice smooth, even swing and get 215, 220. So it seems to cover pretty well. I sometimes debate, do I want to put another wood in the bag maybe to fill that gap? But that hasn't happened yet. So as of right now, I am sticking with this big Bertha 3 at 18 degrees. The shaft in this is a Mitsubishi Kurokagi. This club actually, I have not gotten around to regripping with one of the pure grips. So this just has a actual Golf Pride Tour Velvet 360 on it. Uh, but I should probably go ahead and just change this out for one of those pure grips for consistency's sake. Okay, next up are my irons, and this is four through pitching wedge. I am using these Tacoma 201 irons. Now, again, I've done a couple videos, uh, both a, vi a build video and a review, and I will again leave those down in the comments if you haven't seen them. But I have really been a big fan of these irons since I put them in the bag. I find them just a very good looking, good feeling, forgiving, but still compact looking golf club head. It's got that forged feel and sound, just a really clean look to it. And I think it's just a beautiful iron all the way through the bag, all the way forward to pitching wedge. I definitely really like the long irons, especially because I find them very easy to hit. I had not been using a four iron, honestly, for a while. I'd been using a utility club. And I have found that the four iron in this set is easy enough for me to hit get it up in the air, get good distance out of where I have actually got that four iron in the bag. I'm not going with a utility right now. With these, I went with the True Temper Elevate Tour shafts. Uh, these are sort of a mid-launching steel shaft. They also have the vibration absorbing technology in them, so they give you a little bit softer feel on some of those thin strikes. The weight on these is about 117 grams. Uh, again, that's the raw weight. Remember, when you're talking about shaft weights, when you look at the weights on the websites, they are giving you raw weights always. So, you know, a Dynamic Gold is 130 grams. This shaft is 117. But once you actually cut it down to playing length, you can usually take, say, about 8, 9, 10 grams off that weight that they give you. So this at 117 grams raw actually comes out to about 108 weight when, you're, when it's at its playing length. Uh, we've also got, of course, these nice matching bb and f ferrules with the white, gray, and black. And again, pure grip, same grip that's on my driver in three wood, uh, just a different color. Went with the gray again to match up with the head, match up with the ferrule, but it's the exact same grip, exact same size, just different colors. Okay, next up, the wedges. And the wedges I'm using right now, I've got a four gram, excuse me, a four wedge setup. So pitching wedge gap, sand wedge, and sort of a lower lofted lob wedge. Uh, my gap and my sand wedge are Mizuno. I've got a T20 gap wedge and a T7 sand wedge. The shafts in these two, I actually have something different than what's in my irons. These are both KBS Tour 120 gram shafts. So these are actually uh, about the same weight, pretty much maybe a couple grams heavier than what's in my irons. And they're a little bit stiffer, so trying to take advantage of a little more of that lower launch, higher spin idea that I've talked about in some videos. But uh, I've been very happy with these shafts. These are both done in the sort of, and one is actually the older version uh, in the T7, and one is the newer version in the 51 as far as the finish goes. You can see the, the dark finish on the T7 is actually a little bit lighter than the dark finish on the T20, which is a much more uh, a darker black finish, whereas this is a little more of a, I don't know what we would call that, sort of a pewter, pewter color maybe. But uh, it's the same shaft, it's just a matter of the finish. They changed the way they did the finish at some point a couple of years ago. Real quick, my lob wedge is actually this 58 Cleveland CBX uh, wedge, and this is bent to 59. This club, if you haven't seen one of these before, used one of these before, it's just a big, big forgiving wedge. And so if I'm in a situation where I just have a nasty, gnarly, weird lie around the green, just something that is just one of those lies where you're just wanting to get it somewhere on the green, this is the wedge I'm gonna pull out, this is the wedge I'm gonna hit because nine out of 10 times, I can just take this, 
take a good smooth swing with it and get it somewhere on the green. Uh, I haven't altered this club basically in any way. This has the dynamic gold 115 gram wedge shaft in it. Haven't touched that. Uh, this actually has a Lampkin uh, full cord cross line grip. Again, I haven't changed this. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Again, it works. I don't wanna mess with it too much. So it probably is just gonna stay as it is. Last club in the bag, the putter, my putter. And this putter is uh, pretty old now. This is at least 12, 13, 14 years old at this point. This is a Scotty Cameron Newport, uh, what is one was this? This is the Newport 2. So kind of the uh, plumber's neck, ping answer, uh, answer two style, I guess we would call that. Just, it's the kind of putter I've used for a long time. It seems to be the kind of putter I have the most consistency with. So I will try a mallet putter every so often and that always goes horribly wrong. It never works. And I always end up going back to a blade style putter like this. And this one I just find is, is as good as it gets for me. I changed the paint fill out. I don't really like the red paint fill that Scotty Cameron does. So we have sort of a a blue and white uh, color scheme on the head, also with the sight line in blue. Uh, Lampkin rubber grips on the smaller side. I don't like the big giant uh, super stroke putter grips, things like that. I like a smaller putter grip where I can actually sort of feel a little bit more with it. And just the stock Scotty Cameron putter shaft. Uh, a couple little just odds and ends that I've also got in there. Again, pretty much everyone is going to have a range finder in their golf bag, I think, at this point. The uh, last thing I have in here is my smart stick. And this is basically what I use if I want to film myself uh, on the golf course or on the driving range. So if you see a video of me uh, on the golf course or on the range, very often I am just filming that with my iPhone and my smart stick. And all this is basically is a telescoping pole that's got a little spike here on the end that goes into the ground. It's got a uh, articulating head on it. You attach your phone in there like that. You can move it around landscape or portrait, stick it in the ground, film yourself. I always have this in there, super lightweight and retractable, so just fits right in the golf bag, and you're good to go. Uh, that is basically the highlights and the, the bag itself. The bag itself, I use a Sun Mountain uh, stand bag. I always like a stand bag. I don't, uh, I'm not a fan of staff bags. I like, if I can, to be able to walk when I can, so a good stand bag is always preferable for me, and for me, I think Sun Mountain basically makes the best bags out there so I've had a few of them and I keep going back to them. Okay so that's what's in my bag for 2022. If you enjoyed this video please go down below, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. If you want to follow me on Instagram you can find me there at Mobile Club Maker and I will see you on the next video.